What's up, people? GNR TV, streaming done right. It has all the channels that you would want. You know, the regular channels, channels from out of state, pay-per-views, sports, the movie channels, porn. It has over 2,000 channels in general. Over 2,000 channels. $20 a month for two devices now. Not one, but two devices for 20 bucks, and you get all that amazing stuff. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, there's no sports right now. There's not really many pay-per-views. Well, guess what? There is sports because UFC is back. And there's pay-per-views because guess what? UFC is back, and the rest of the sports will be back eventually, and it's worth it. This app is freaking amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I've had it for a little over a year now. I'm never going to get rid of it, and I love it. I love it so much. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And enjoy the rest of the show. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Jason's mask. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Another episode of Horror with Star Sturdy. Today I have my guests, Alpha and Stacy. How are you two doing? Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Good. And. I did just finish 100 Acres of Hell. I enjoyed it. I'm a, I'm like a, I should say a gore whore. So for me, it's like the gorier, the better. And the kills in this movie were so freaking, they were just so fun and cool. I love the campiness of these type of horror movies. Slasher is like my favorite genre by far. So this is like right up my alley. <laughs> it was fun to make it. That's for sure. Um, and we filmed um, quite a, a bit of it, actually, in uh, my backyard and on my property uh, here in the Pocono Mountains. So it was super cool uh, to have everybody here. And Afa's from around this area, too. Um, and, you know, between here, uh, down in, like, Tamaqua, Oregsburg area in Pennsylvania, and then in New Jersey, um, down by Atlantic City and stuff like that. It was it was a good time. That's awesome. That's awesome. Excuse me. Oh, was this was this for both of you? Was this your first time working with a horror movie, or? Uh, well, for me, um, I uh, I was hired um, for for public rela- public relations for this film. Um, I originally was a live TV news director uh, for about eleven years, mm-hmm. and. Um, You know, so I I was on set about a week and, you know, one thing led to another and then they asked me to be the production manager in charge of the whole set. Um, So I bought Filmmaking for Dummies (laughs) and uh, and I and I took the opportunity and, um, you know, people like Ernie O'Donnell and uh, Gene Snitsky and Jason Kerner and Ed McKeever, all those guys really, you know, believed in me and thought this would be a great opportunity for me. So this was my first time on a horror set um, and it ended up, you know, working out great. And now that's, it's ultimately what ended up um, why I'm a producer and now I'm the COO of a film production company. And, you know, just because of that little thing, you know, I now have offices here in, in the Poconos out in LA, Atlanta, Orlando and London. So yeah, <laughs> it, it worked out well, but it, it was my first set and it sur- certainly wasn't my last what about you, Alpha? <laughs> uh, yeah, for, well, my career, I'm basically, you know, a pro wrestler. So every, everyday life is like a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, as far as, as, you know, being on screen and, and being on the set. Yeah, that was my first one. Done a couple other things in the past as far as uh, acting and stuff like that goes. But nothing as far as uh, the action and excitement that. 100 Acres of Hell gave me on, on set. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, Alpha even, like, he, I remember they were doing the live stunts. Um, and, and Alpha, like, you tweaked your neck or something. And I was just like, holy shit, dude. Like, <laughs> I mean, literally, this was when when they were flipping all around on the cars and all that. Like, 
They were real cars that literally haven't been touched since like 1972 or, or, or even later. And they're just like flipping around on it. And, and I'm just like, oh my God, like I couldn't believe it when I was seeing it myself. <laughs> That's awesome. But it was easier for me because I came right from a wrestling event. So it was like oh. I came right from the event. I had the adrenaline going, and then we were playing in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, playing. Holy crap. It was it was insane. <laughs> yeah, it was – like I said, I, I did enjoy the movie. I do want to re review it with one of my um, co-hosts one of these days. Mm -hmm. But, again, like I, I love the gore. And I know, Alpha, you were you were like doing a lot of the stunts, which I thought was just cool, and it makes sense because of your background with wrestling. It makes plenty of sense. Yeah, the bumps and all that. So that's, I was like, that's cool. Would you? Is it something you would want to do again, though? Pursue again? Maybe even like a a bigger role? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I had a blast on that role. Um, you know, it, being you know all costumed up and stuff like that, kind of takes a toll i couldn't really see anything wearing the mask <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh you know it, it had its challenges but yeah i definitely would love to do it again um you know maybe a bigger role or you know just just being involved somehow it's 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 always a good time i'm not, I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with the horror community but it's humongous and very very welcoming from the bottom to the top mm -hmm. and it's, it's it's so awesome like i started this show two and a half years ago now and just so many people that I've met doing this just literally doing what I'm doing now doing this and going to like horror conventions and you meet so many cool people independent and you know bigger names and all that but everybody's just so like real friendly with advice everybody's so welcoming as far as just wanting to show you the ropes or wanting to show you a movie or whatever the case may be trying to help you make other connections with not just you know podcasts, other actors, actresses, directors. And it's just, it's a very unselfish, unselfish community in the horror community. Not everybody, but I guess you could say that about anything. Not everybody is great and all that, but for the most part, it's awesome. The people are amazing. And you wouldn't think because all the crazy violent stuff we like to watch. Yeah, absolutely true. Um, even, you know, like Eileen Dietz was in this film um, in 100 Acres of Hell. <clears throat> Excuse me. She was in the beginning, the old, you know, the old woman. And, mm -hmm. um, it, you know, me and her became like fast friends just from a meeting at a horror convention um, a few years ago, even prior to this film being made. Um, and she is uh, Linda Blair's double from The Exorcist. And she's the one who did the pea soup scene, you know, and, and all of these, you know, uh, iconic scenes i mean as well as some other stuff i mean she was a she's an amazing actress but um me and her became quick friends and um you know it's funny because even just this january when i was out at the grammy awards since you know I, I attend the grammy awards every year um and when i was out there she had me over her house and i'm like you know i'm standing there in her house you know because we're friends now and i'm like listen you terrorized me when i was a kid in my house so now i'm in your house and i'm gonna terrorize you you know and it's just so funny but everybody's so down to earth and and like you said like so opening and i mean everybody is just people you know like um, you know, Afa is just another person. I love you, buddy, but you're just like me, you know, and like, mm -hmm. you know, all these people who do, you know, have their, you know, egos and all that kind of stuff. It's just like, you know, whatever, like they're not, they're missing out on meeting like a ton of really awesome people. And, and, you know, it's just, it's stupid. So you should just be fun. <laughs> I agree with you. And like, I learned that a lot just from going to cons and stuff, just like, you know, go, going to get autographs and seeing how down the earth they really are. And it's, for me, it's so cool. Cause I've been watching horror since I was about between five and seven. I don't know which age it was, mm -hmm. but it's cool. Like going to these cons and getting their autographs and talking with these people, having a beer with these people now, even that I've been watching mm -hmm. since I was a kid and they're just sitting here, you know, I mean, I know we're all regular, normal people, but it's something I never thought I never imagined that in my whole, you know, until, you know, my adult life when I started this podcast and going to cons, but as a kid, you never think of, oh, wow, I can meet Jason Voorhees, or I can meet the guy who played Michael Myers, or whatever mm -hmm. the case, whatever the case may be, and now it's just like, I got to meet these people, and like you were just saying, at the end of the day, everybody just, we're just regular people, we're just mm -hmm. normal people, some are just more famous and have a lot more money than others, but at the same time, mm -hmm. we're just 
people come yeah. through. Well, even Alpha, like, you know, I've looked up to, like, his family and, and like, I've watched, you know, him and, and his brother, Samu, who was also in the film and, you know, his father and everything. And it's really cool to be able to just, like, talk to him about, you know, different things. But, you know, he's so much more than just, you know, from SmackDown and stuff. Like, you know, he was a football star and he went to college and he, you know, like, and it's it's so cool. I don't know. Like, Alpha, I'm sorry, but I'm bragging on you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, and that's the stuff that you get to learn too, like when you get to hang out with them because it's just like, oh my God, like, you know, like they've done so much stuff and it's just like, I mean, these people, his family is the one who sold out Madison Square Garden. I mean, holy cow, you know what I mean? And <laughs> and he's here talking to me. <laughs> I, I, the same thing. Like every, every time I get guests on here, whether it's a fan or somebody from a movie, I'm like, you're coming here to talk to me. And mm -hmm. the cool thing about it, especially when I'm talking to people who are from movies more so is they tell me like how awesome it is to come on a platform, just a platform where they can discuss what they're doing, promote, you know, promote their movie, promote their old work their new work, whatever the case may be. And I, that's humbling for me. Cause I'm like, I'm just doing this as a fan of you guys. I'm not even like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, so it's cool. fun. The, the circle, it's like, it's just like, you know, you, you finally come full circle or something like that, but it's, it's cool. And you know, like Afa, I love, you know, helping him and he's, you know, he's, he's got a lot of good stuff that's going to be coming up and, you know, uh, yeah, I'm excited for him, but it's really cool to kind of help play a little hand, you know, also in, in some of it too. So it's cool. We all support each other. All boats rise with the tide. <laughs> Always. <laughs> now, is there anything that you have upcoming off of that you can discuss or is it all kind of, you got to keep going? Uh, well, kind of just right now, I mean, I mean we've got a couple things in, in the works and, you know, in planning stages and stuff like that. Um, but I mean, we're really just waiting for this COVID thing to blow over. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, yep. and, and, and as far as wrestling and stuff like that goes, and just getting out and you know doing the conventions and everything like that, man, it's I, I just I, I can't wait for this thing to be done. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I mean, as far as future projects and stuff like that go, I, I, me and Stacy, we're definitely working on a couple different projects. Um, that are very, very exciting. You know, I don't want to go into too much detail, but you know, it's um, it's going to shed a lot of light on, you know, on my family and stuff like that. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. That's cool. Really cool. With this whole COVID thing, I, I will say the one positive for me is I get to work on my craft more as far as recording like this, because I'm out, I'm getting paid to stay home from work. So I'm just like, I might as well <laughs> do these interviews and <laughs> podcasts while I can. And I feel, I feel for people, not just other podcasters, but say people that want to do films, if they want to record a film or act, and you're out of, if you're out of work and you have the time like that, now is like the perfect time to, to do one of those cracks, start your podcast or start your video, your video thing or whatever. Cause you, can, you have so much time to practice now and so much time. I and I only, I say practice at it. And I also say no matter how good or how bad you think it is, put it out there for the world to see or hear just so you can see how much you've grown within even within a few weeks, a few days, 10 days, you're going to grow a lot if you practice that all the time. I agree. I absolutely agree. You know, and that's the first thing is everyone is just always afraid about what everybody else thinks. And like, I, at the end of the day, who fucking cares? Because, you know, if you're doing what you love to do, then that really should be all that matters. As long as you're not hurting anybody and as long as you're not an asshole, then, you know, <laughs> whatever. Everybody else's, you know, opinions, they don't even matter because, you know, if I listened to what everybody told me, you know, uh, years ago because I, you know, I had some some trips and stumbles like we all do in our life and stuff and everyone's like, oh, you're a failure. You're just, you know, you're going to be this and you're only going to be this and a drug addict and whatever. And it's like, you know, here we are 17 years later and, you know, they're asking me for, um, you know, uh, you know, tickets or, or people's autographs or whatever. And they're like coming to me and asking me for advice and, and whatnot, because if, if you listen to what everybody else is telling you, then you're going to be just exactly where like all of those other people are. You know what I mean? Like you, you've got to just Find it in yourself and, and just say, fuck it. Like, you take your fuck it all. It's a pill or if it's <laughs> whatever it is, you just, it's fuck it all and just take it <laughs> and go with it. And, you know, do what makes you happy. I, you know, and then I, I love supporting other people because they're doing what makes them happy. And if, you know, you're mad or jealous or whatever, like, then 
go and do it for yourself. Like instead of just being mad and jealous, you know, but at least do something. And um, yeah, I mean, I support everybody. Like I always tell my friends, even if you want to be a tuna fish, I'll help support you to be the best damn tuna fish that you can be, you know, whatever you want, man. <laughs> I'm definitely with you a hundred percent on that as far as supporting. And I mean, that's another reason for this podcast. And now is for the horror community, at least it gives, you know, them a platform, especially, even more so, I'll say for indie because you know they don't they don't necessarily have a voice like you know the big Hollywood movies do. So it gives them a mm-hmm. platform to come on here, discuss their work, discuss their passion, and get my listeners and my viewers to check them out. And at the same time, it helps me because it gets their listeners or their fans to come check this show out, just because they're on that one or two episodes. So it's it's all about helping each other out and helping each other grow. And it'll be great once more and more people realize that. Yes, I know you have to make certain things about yourself, but at the same time, if you make things about others as far as just helping them out, it's going to help you grow and be a better person, too, in the long run. Mm -hmm. I agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let me ask you a question. What was your favorite part of 100 Acres of Hell? The, um, actually, Ah. the the bow and arrow where the guy, the girl was taking her top off and she was Uh like, she was listening to the guy's heartbeat and it went through his chest and through her mouth. Uh Uh-huh. (laughs) <laughs> that right there was so awesome because I I'm a huge fan of sp- special effects. Mm-hmm. I was like that was just so beautifully done right there. I was like, wow. That I was- know their special effects stuff was really cool to watch. You know, um, Dawn Flinderella, uh, she was she was doing a, a great job, and um, even on some of those other things, I know Joanna D did some. <coughs> and I mean, they, they both are, uh, you know. And then we had also had. Um, uh, um, a ton of people that were in like uh, Mel Licata and um, uh, Zach Graham and uh, Ricky Ricky Vitus and um, Ricky and Melanie were on Face Off um, from on that Sci Fi show Face Off. Mm-hmm. So I mean, like watching them work and and oh my gosh, like some of that stuff was just insane. And I'm like, whoa, you know, like it's crazy the amount of of time and. Um, and, and even like the blood and stuff, like their blood was like, it was, <laughs> it was like so consistent with like blood I've seen in the past, you know, in different stages that I was just like, wow, like I almost wanted to get sick, but like that stuff doesn't make me sick, but I'm just like, holy crap, you know, like that was like, so to the, they were just so on point. Um, and they did such an amazing job with even this, the prosthetics and, and the kids and, and holy crap though. Some of that stuff is, and, and of course it's even funnier in the beginning when things didn't work, you know, like they wanted things to like look a certain way, like blood was going to be coming down, you know, from the middle of their head or something. And then like you go to try it and it's like the most, you know, unexciting thing or it just like totally backfires and then like went all in like the face of you know the the art the makeup artist or the special effect it was just it was kind of funny because it was like you were getting so kind of ticked off because <laughs> the blood won't go the way you want it to go or you know you know this pipe won't work or or there's no pressure for this or it's just there's a lot that goes into stuff like that you think it's easy to kill someone it is not <laughs> especially when you can't see <laughs> That's, yes exactly like off you can't even see <laughs> another thing i liked about it is it, i like how it's kind of a, um a throwback to the 80s horror movies the 80s genre mm-hmm. which, again or 80s era i should say sorry which again i feel is like the best era of horror especially with the slashers yes and just mm-hmm. i like how i just i what it is i like how simple the movie is as far as just friends going out in the woods camping and then hell breaks loose. I just like that. It wasn't too much going on. There wasn't, there wasn't too much dialogue to the point where you're like, okay, when's the action going to happen? Like all the dialogue that, that happened was, it wasn't too mm-hmm. long. And then something funny happened. The one, I can't think of the guy's name, but the one, the pervert, he, he's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's, he's a good time, man. He's a good time. All of them were like, it was so much fun um, being on set with these guys too, because um, I mean, everybody was just, they were funny, you know, we all got along too, which was the strange part, even like when we were all pissed off or, you know, for the most part, um, and, and 
we were like delirious, you know, being on set that late and for that long. And oh my gosh, that's why I like watching Afa uh, and, and Samu and Jean in some of those fight scenes and stuff. I mean, oh, and the one with Samu, um, you know, in, in front of the bonfire and everything. I mean, all of those things, it's like you were delirious. But then when that picked up, it was like being just front row, like at, an actual WWE event like you're just like holy shit like an adrenaline starts going and you're just like you just wanted to scream and yell and like you couldn't because they were <laughs> they were filming and you're just like okay do it again do it again I mean it was just it was intense and I mean I felt bad for like Alpha and Samu and Jean because you know they were getting tired and it was just like but you guys are better than espresso like you're keeping all of us up you know what I mean with the adrenaline yeah <laughs> So, Alpha, as far as, like, the stunts and stuff in this movie, was it too far off from wrestling? Or? Uh, um, no, I mean, since it was Snitsky and, you know, uh, I've wrestled him so many times, it was, you know, a sense of comfort there. <laughs> I guess <laughs> as, as comfortable as you could be being in, in the ring with someone jean size. But, yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, wrestling was – Played every every bit of that, you know what I mean? I, I was basically just, it was like having a no-holds-barred match in the woods, you know what I mean? Like, you have your fans there, but they're, it's almost like a Japanese crowd where they're quiet, you know? They, they want to show their respect or whatever, but it was, it was just really cool. The thing that got to us, though, it was like, you know, in wrestling, we'll go out there and have a 45-minute match, one take. Yeah. And these movies, all these takes and angles and rolling for sounds, and <laughs> man, that, that's what was taking a toll on us is you know, flipping on the cars and stuff like that. There was there was no crash pads on these cars or nothing. You know, there was really us doing that. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it was – I did it the first time, and then we were – you know, I thought that was it because in wrestling, you know, I'm used to wrestling. So everything mm -hmm. in my mind, my, my my mentality as far as being on camera and stuff like that is let's get it done on the first take. <laughs> yeah, yep. Cameraman, mm -hmm. make sure you get this, all right? We're going to do this big. <laughs> we're going to do it right. We're going to do it right now. You know what I mean? That sort of thing. So when we did it, and then uh, the the director was just like, "Oh my god, that was amazing! Can we do it again?" And I was just like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> what? I know, like I just yeah, broke my was... neck on this one. <laughs> but it was cool, you know what I mean. And then uh, ultimately, the the stiffest bump or stunt was was at the end. Um, you know, uh, I don't want to give any spoilers to the movie or whatever, but was the final, you know, the final kill scene when when Jeff Tucker took the bump into the pit. So, and that one was the stiffest. That was the stiffest bump of the day. It's hard to time a bump because you're falling in a hole, you know, mm -hmm. whereas if you're falling on a ground or a, or a pad or something, you, you pretty much can time that. But when it's deeper than the floor, it, it's really hard to time. It's almost like getting thrown over the top rope. You gotta, gotta really find it, you know? And we did that a couple takes and that one killed, that one killed. But after that, I was glad we wrapped. <laughs> yep. <laughs> now, going back to what you just said about being thrown over off the top rope, or any other, you know, these wrestling matches being thrown off of high things. How do you brace yourself for that? Uh, I, I guess it just goes with a lot of trust with your opponent and stuff like that, you know, um, uh, and and mostly training, you know, because even if, if, you know, God forbid something happens and the guy's timing is off and he's not there to catch you, mm -hmm. we're, we're able to, you know, protect ourselves so that we're not breaking bones, and, you know what I mean? It's just just a lot of, a lot of practice and experience, I guess, you know, it's – but the adrenaline helps too you know the, the the adrenaline of having a crowd there that is second to none that is something that not even a movie could duplicate the, that <laughs> raw adrenaline you know um but you know it's just a bunch of i guess a bunch of different variables that that kind of help help take the edge off i guess <laughs> I'm, I'm asking that question because i just recently um my brother is getting my nephews into wrestling somewhat and just yeah. told them the Hell in a Cell with Undertaker and Mankind. And I know you remember yeah. him, him getting thrown off the top of the cage. I'm just – and you saying, like, how you got to, you know, trust your trust your partner, your opponent. But it's like, yeah. how brace yourself for a, a fall like that? Like, that's just – Yeah, I well, want to know that too. <laughs> you trust your opponent, but it, it's all self-confidence because you, you're never going to find a wrestler going up to attempt anything that they can't in their mind do, you know. Now, Mick Foley, you know, Mankind or whatever, he's jumped off of the top of Barnes, you know, 30 foot. He's done that stuff before, so he knows what he's capable of. 
you know, you're not going to find a, a day one rookie going up to the top of the building and jumping off and stuff like that. You know, it all, it's all, you know, comes down to self-confidence, I believe, you know, you know, cause when we're out there in front of that crowd, you know, in our mind, we can do anything. And, you know, a lot of us, we, we go too far and we get hurt, you know, and then we're, we, we're out of work for a while, but I mean, it's all, it's all for the thrill uh, to entertain, I guess, you know, we love entertaining the people and we love, um, their emotions and their reactions, but we get it live. So we know if it's good or bad right there immediately. <laughs> oh man. Now do you, as far as you, like, I'm not in the wrestling like I used to be, but do you, yeah. as far as, like you're, you, you're, when you're wrestling, do you care if you're a, a heel or not? Or is it like, I know some, some guys I've heard them just from interviews saying they'd rather be the heel. They like to be the heel because you can pretty much in a sense, do whatever you want. You know what I mean? Yeah. And versus being, I forgot what they call the good. The baby face. Hey, there you go. The baby face. <laughs> you can only do, you can only get away with so much and still be the baby face. But they look like whatever. The business is has pretty much evolved a lot. Where it's not really necessarily heels and baby faces anymore. Like, you know, back in when I started, I started in 1998, um, pretty much during the Attitude Era and stuff like that. During that time, there was big heels and babyface. You know, it was more character driven. Um, the heels job was to get booed and get the babyface over, period. You know, and yeah, you have more um, heels could do whatever. You know what I mean? Because if you're a, a fighting babyface or, you know, the good guy or whatever, you're not going to cheat to get a to get a win. You have to play by the rule. You know what I mean? They're like there's yeah. certain guidelines. to. It's like, you know, it, it, like a script, basically. Um, but like nowadays, um, everyone's going out as their normal name. You know, the, the characters are kind of not there as much. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you have mm -hmm. some flamboyant guys, or, you know what I mean? Some high flying mm -hmm. flashy guys, but like, as far as ah, I can't stand them, just, you know what I mean? Like there's no butchers yeah. or anything coming out anymore. You know what I mean? Like those yeah. character days are gone. So it's really, um, I guess it's, you gotta feel it nowadays, you know, it's, some days you'll be a baby face. Some days you'll be a heel. You know, um, when you're on TV, it's a different, different, completely different story because then you have to week to week, you know, keep up with the storylines and keep up with everything. So you can't really have the liberty of doing it like in the independence or the, you know, the smaller leagues that are out there. So, you know, it's, but I personally, I would rather be a heel. Um, it's just easier. <laughs> it's easier for me. You know what I mean? You're looking at a big, ugly Samoan coming out and I'm, you know, staring at kids and making kids cry. You know, it's easier for that than to get these people to cheer for me. <laughs> it's like exactly yeah. what you'd yeah. want to take home to your mother is what you're describing. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone wants to see the big bully get beat up. They don't want to see us win. So it's easier to be the girl. <laughs> cool. it, it, I mean, it's, it looks more fun, too, just from like, again, going back to the attitude era, like watching that era, the heel, it just looks so fun being the heel versus the baby face. I'm not saying the baby face isn't fun, but just the looks of it, because, you, again, you're doing like whatever the hell, bringing something to the cage and cheating in your yeah. match. Well, back then, the heels were usually the better wrestlers because they're the ones that have to get the baby faces over. The baby faces, you need a good heel to get to get over. You know what I mean? Like, what is Hulk Hogan without the Iron Sheik? You know what I mean? Like, it's mm -hmm. you have these kind of things. Is they build off of each other. So, um, yeah, wrestling is it's, it's great business. It's fun. It's and it's exciting all the time because you never know. Everything every night is different. <laughs> now, do you different script every day? Besides your family members, growing up, did you have a favorite wrestler? Yeah, I was a big uh, Bret Hart fan. I loved uh, Bret Hart. I loved Owen Hart. I just loved. Um, they're tech, like they were mat technicians and I loved it. You know, um, they weren't, they weren't really character guys. Like, I, I don't know. They were just good, good wrestlers, you know? And I, and I really liked that about them. And then I started to like D'Lo Brown. He was also one of my, like, I'd say top three. Um, D'Lo Brown was, was a great wrestler back mm -hmm. when he was in the nation and stuff like that. He was very innovative as far as his moves go and his charisma and stuff like that. And I, I really enjoyed him. So, yeah. Mine was um, it's funny you say Bret Hart. Cause mine was Shawn Michaels. Yeah, just the high flying stuff. I always loved and the flip. Like I always loved that kind of stuff watching it. And it was just he was he was entertaining to watch. Back you know back in the day. Oh yeah, and just Shawn's one of the greatest. The way you, I have so much respect for you guys. The way you guys put your bodies on the line, it's I'm just like wow. 
Yeah, what's like the worst thing that ever happened to you, like physically, that like you know you got hurt with, Alpha? Um, it was a couple of years ago. Uh, I was on tour in South Africa, and uh, we were at this splash festival. There was tons of people. It was like fifteen, sixteen thousand people, all on the beach. Um, and I had a match, and I ended up. I had this great idea where I was going to do a moonsault, you know, backflip off the top rope. Mm -hmm. um, but I was going to do it to the floor. <laughs> so I did it. And, uh, and this was very early into the match. And, um, yeah, I broke my hip. Ooh. Mm. Completely broke it. And I didn't know. I didn't. I thought, you know, maybe. You I didn't know. <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't know. I didn't know. So I, I finished the match, you know, and, I, and my finishing move is the top rope splash. So here I am with a broken hip, you know, 10 minutes later. I'm thinking I got a pulled groin or something, and I'm jumping off the top rope. So, you know, then we win. Um, the next day, we ended up going on a hunt, um, like a safari hunt. And, um, yeah, here I am going hunting in Africa. And I can't even walk. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my walk. God. I can't walk, but um, I'm still out there. I'm still walking. And then finally, when I get my hunt, <clears throat> you know, and then we have to chase the animal after, after we shoot it. So now we're chasing this thing, and here I am sprinting through Africa with a broken <laughs> hip. I'm in so much pain, but I had no idea. I didn't know it was broken because I could still walk. It was just kind of, you know, I was just kind of limping and dragging my leg along, you know. So then oh I came home. I went to the hospital, the, you know, get the x-rays. Doctor looked at me. He's like, I cannot believe you walked into my hospital, you know, first of all. Because then he showed me the, in the x-ray, I had a clean break top to bottom. You know what I mean? And, like, they didn't want to pin it or anything like that because it was lined up too clean. They couldn't have lined it up any better than what it, what it was. Um, but, yeah, I was walking. And then a week later, I went back to South Africa on a tour. And um, we ended up competing, me and Snitsky, uh, at the Arnold Classic in South Africa with Arnold Schwarzenegger and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, me and Snitsky ended up signing up in the open division in uh, the strict arm curl. And then I ended up taking two gold medals in the Arnold Classic with a broken hip. A week. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this you are incredible. You know what I mean? And this is in front of Arnold. Arnold comes up, you know, and he shakes my hand and he grabs my shoulder. And he goes, that was a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's so cool. It's just crazy. But, like, yeah, in wrestling, you don't have time to be hurt, man. If, if I'm hurt. If I, if I have to go get surgery or whatever, repair a knee or something like that, and I'm down and, and out for six to nine months, and that's six to nine months, I'm not getting paid. I'm not on contract at this moment. You know, so it's mm -hmm. like, if I could walk, I'm old school, man. I started back in 98, and I was raised, if you could walk, you could go. So, and, I, and you know, my hip was broken, but, you know, crazy enough, I was still able to walk, so I was able to go. <laughs> oh my god and you're chasing after wild animals and holy oh, yeah, crap yeah, man yeah. you got my respect <laughs> that's, that's crazy that's so cra that's funny and crazy at the same it's like holy shit broken hip that's it i'm done i retire i quit yeah, yeah but just, like that whole story in and of itself i mean like you've made it in life dude <laughs> like, <laughs> you know just to even be able to do the shit broken hip or not no, no, you, no, know, just, you should be proud of yourself <laughs> that's just one chapter in the book i got i got plenty more that i'd like to do so <laughs> <laughs> i got another wrestling question for you while we're on it is there do you have like a um and this is from any era like a dream match you would like to have any any type of match and any opponent. Hmm. Have you ever thought about that? And I never really got asked that question. Ooh, that's a good thing. <laughs> nice I'd say job. A dream there. match. <laughs> Man, there's so many. It's like, how do you not want to wrestle The Rock in his prime? You know? Ah! <laughs> I, like, <laughs> how do you not want to take that down? You know, or wrestle yeah. Stone Cold in his prime? It's like, how do you not want to wrestle these guys in their prime? Um, I don't know though. I think I'd have to. I'd have to uh, tag with my dad. Oh, I really yeah. would like to tag with my dad. Um, like I've done it in his retirement match, but I, I mean, like tag with my dad in his prime and me in my prime, you know. And I and I think that would be amazing. And uh, I think we'd be able to to tear it down with anybody. But I think a good matchup for me and my pops would be uh, the the Road Warriors. Oh man, I think Ooh. that would be a good one. That. <laughs> I just watched Dark Side of the Ring with those guys, and that would be crazy. 
that would be crazy. That would be a very brutal match. I can say that right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'd pay, oh, yeah. I'd pay to see that for sure. Don't, don't expect <laughs> a lot of headlocks in that match. <laughs> no, no. no, not not at all. Everybody's leaving from that match, London. <laughs> oh ahead. yeah, that's insane. No, I think no. I would bet Afa and his dad would just like they would just not get up. <laughs> They're like they would just not get up. The other guys, I mean, like Afa, you and your dad would just walk away. And, like, the other guys just wouldn't even get up at all. That's what <laughs> I think. No, that's crazy. That's, that's, that's crazy. I would like to see you in some more roles, though, like in another slasher role. As Me like, too. <laughs> and honestly, anything. Anything slasher-related, just because of your size and your brute force, I feel like it would be more effective than, say, like a, a Conjuring-type movie. You right, never, right. You, you never you really see like a diesel ghost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it would be funny. But I'd be mean, like, as far as, you know, like a, a Jason Voorhees or a Michael Myers type or even a, a new character. But just right, right. That, to make it your own. Like the yeah, Simone no, Slasher. Would, there you go. The Simone Slasher. That, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. And that would be something I would, I would really enjoy doing. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> it could be like a whole new genre, the Simone Slashers. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know who to talk cutting to. Cutting people up on the beach on vacation. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, but you guys got enough of you and your whole family that, like, you literally could start an entire new genre and and film. <laughs> like, you can have your own app, like on TV on the smart TVs, like the Simone Slashers. <laughs> yeah, about it. I, I think that'd be fun to. I really think that'd be fun to watch. You got it right there. <laughs> Just make it happen. There, there we you know. go. Stacy, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll start making some phone calls. But at least now we have some proof, you know, with with your show. So you better post oh. this. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And again, I'm I'm a horror. I'm one of those horror fans. I, I like everything as far as the indie stuff all the way up to Hollywood and anything in between. The B horror movies, the comedy horror movies. It's just. It's all entertaining. Mm -hmm. I like to laugh, though. I love the the horror movies that have, like, the dumb humor in it and stuff. Like, you know, even, like, the original, like, Leprechaun. <laughs> you know, like, it's like he's, like, it was, the, oh, my God, it scared me for sure, like, that face of his. But then, like, you see him on roller skates, like, going through the fence and stuff. <laughs> you know, like, that stupid stuff like that. <laughs> if, if, you, if you like a stupid humor comedy horror movies, my mm -hmm. favorite one, and it's been my favorite one for the past few years, it's called Thanks Killing. It's about a killer turkey. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I'm writing it. Hold on. Let me write it down. <laughs> Up my alley. <laughs> it's, it's so ridiculous. And it's on this app called um, Tubi, which is a free Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, on, it's on Tubi, and it's just – I love the freaking movie. Anytime somebody mentions comedy horror, I bring that movie up, and I just – that's well, that's what I'm doing later then. Thanks, uh, Killing. <laughs> and, and the funny thing is that movie, like, there's obviously way better horror movies than that, but that's, like, one movie for some reason it just, I always recommend Thanks, Killing. I don't know why. I don't even know why I love it so much, but I do. I even bought the DVD of it a few weeks ago, and I can watch well, it for free. I'll, get, I'll let you know after I watch it if you're either a nut job or, <laughs> I always, or if I liked it too. <laughs> I always tell people, I'm like, let me know what you thought about it. After you, within the first, I'll say first minute of the movie, and then when you watch the whole movie, tell me your thoughts about it. And you, a lot of people like it. It was hilarious. My All wife, right. my wife, on the other hand, I remember I was watching it. I was preparing for a podcast for it. She watched like the first two minutes of it and just left the room. She's like, "I can't do this. <laughs> I can't." Do Not it. today, Satan. Not today. <laughs> That's funny. She just left the room. I'm like, okay. okay. Well, All right. Well, this can go either way then. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the disclaimer. <laughs> gotta be honest. I, I, gotta be honest. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> but I think you would enjoy it. You have you seem like you have that sense of humor, you would enjoy it. You just like yeah. like the comedy <laughs> horror stuff, the cheesy comedy horror. That's exactly what you're getting out of this. Of course. Life's hard enough. So I, I you know, none of these cry, sappy, bullshit women typical stuff. Like <laughs> Life's hard enough. Make me laugh, please, please. <laughs> I, I see. I laugh at just about any type of horror movie for the most part. I can. Fi I find humor in it. I don't know how all the time. I feel like a lot of really, you know, like a lot of uh, horror fans are like really deep in the horror. We'll find humor in just about any horror movie, and 
A lot yeah. of people look at it like, how the hell is that funny to you? What's so funny about somebody getting thrown up against a tree? <laughs> it's just funny. I don't know. It's just Yeah. Because it ain't real. <laughs> the, um, another kill I liked was the tree trunk. The one, the tree oh, trunk. yeah. Got the tree trunk on the guy. And that kind of reminded me of Jason in Friday the 13th, part seven, where he takes the girl in the sleeping bag and slams her up against the tree. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was Joel. He got uh, splattered. It was, uh, I, that was like his dream. You know, <laughs> his dream was just like to die in a horror film and, and be a little snot to Gene Snitsky because he was the same guy that was like, you ran like into him um, when they were going into the one um, general store. And he was like, you know, he was the short kid telling Snitsky, looking up at him, pointing at him like, yeah, that was Joel's dream. He's a, Joel's an amazing, amazing human. He's actually the one who brought me on to hire me um, for public relations. So I have to thank him, you know, for, cause he's, he ultimately <laughs> started something that set a whole new pathway uh, of my career. Um, so yeah, I, I love that scene too, because it totally, you know, made his, his whole dream come true, you know? <laughs> awesome. Did you have a favorite scene in this movie offer that you were like, you were a part of? Uh, yeah, just a big fight scene at the end, okay. you know, that was, that was, man, that was so fun. That was so fun. Just doing all, just doing it all and, and, and watching the magic, you know, in the final, uh, the final take and yeah, it was just, that was really fun. I liked the final scene. Now, okay. Here's a question for both of you. Cause you were both on, obviously on set throughout the whole thing from what you've seen on set and how the movie came out, did it like exceed your expectations? Yeah, one hundred percent for me. One hundred percent for me. You know, uh, you don't really know what you're expecting when you sign on to to do a project like this. You know, yeah. You you don't know if it's going to be the worst of the worst, <laughs> or, or or become a cult classic. You know what I mean? You you really don't know. So, uh, yeah, this, man, this was awesome. It was just awesome. <laughs> yeah, same for me. I mean, you know. I guess, like, you know, it was so nice just to see everybody come together, stick together, you mm -hmm. know, and then it took years for all of this to finally, you know, hit Amazon, which it's on now, you know, Amazon, Voodoo, iTunes, Google Play, uh, you know, all there, it's about like 32 platforms um, and it takes a long time, but it's like, you know, when people stick together and they don't give up um, and they truly all believe in the final product. It's really, really cool. And they, I mean, it has exceeded my expectations um, and more. Um, and it taught me a lot and, you know, it actually added a lot more value to my life than I thought. And you never think, you know, a horror film could do something like that, mm -hmm. but yeah. So yes. <laughs> Yeah, with horror, like like I was saying earlier, it's so crazy how welcoming it is. It's, it's awesome at the same time, but just again, from starting this podcast to going to cons and everything, it's you wouldn't think you wouldn't think being if you I'll say if you're not a horror fan, you wouldn't think that horror would be like one of the most welcoming communities ever. So much death can bring you so much life. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, guess, I guess that's a good way of looking at it, but it's just we all just get together and just have a great time and laugh and do this kind of stuff, talking about these movies. And I can't wait. Like I said, I can't wait to see more. I really can't wait to see more. Ooh, well, stay tuned. Who knows? <laughs> you have to make this happen for us. Also. <laughs> That's fun. You guys have any other questions for me or? Uh, no, I'm, I mean, Alpha, do you? Man, it was just a great time being on here, man. Uh, this is, usually it's just all wrestling when I, when I get on these things. So it was a breath of fresh air to talk about a different project and <laughs> yes. something new. So it was, this was fun. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Hey, anytime you guys have anything horror related and you want to come on, let me just shoot me an email or whatever the case may be and we can make it happen. Definitely. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate you two both coming on. I had an awesome time. If there's anything you guys want to plug, you can go right ahead. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be just horror either. You can plug whatever projects you have coming up. Alpha, do you have anything? Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and plug my Twitter because you know that seems yeah. to be what everyone does nowadays. So you can go ahead and follow me at Samoan Storm. Um, that's S A M O A N Storm. 
Um, that's on uh, Twitter and Instagram. And uh, yeah, and I, I, you know, usually post all my projects and stuff like that on there. So awesome. it's a good way to keep track. Awesome. Fantastic. And I'm on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn at Stacy Toy, S T A C E Y T O Y. Or you can follow uh, my film production company, which is 258 Studios. Um, and it's on Instagram, Facebook, all one word, 258 Studios spelled out. Or um, our website is the numbers 258studios.com. Um, you know, we're working on a, a bunch of different stuff, like uh, um, currently a documentary with a Grammy nominated blues artist they've called The Future of Blues, who's played with everyone from BB King to Eric Clapton. And we're, you know, uh, filming a documentary and a new. Uh, soundtrack for it and a book that follows um, for some major um, networks right now and so that's what we're currently working on so stay tuned to all that and you can follow along on all of the social media platforms um, but yeah that should you know you'll be hearing a lot more about that soon and, and a few other things and then hopefully uh, sooner than later uh, those projects Alpha and I are working on together as well. Oh, that's all, that sounds all that sounds so great, and I just want to tell my listeners, you got to go follow these two. They're awesome, amazing. As you guys heard through this interview, and where you can find me, Horror Research Thirty, I have a Facebook group, which that's for anybody and everybody to share anything and everything horror related, including your own horror projects. I have a Facebook page, Horror Research Thirty Facebook page, that's strictly for the podcast. I post updates. That's where I'm posting all my episodes and everything will be in there. I have a Horror Research 30 YouTube channel, so you can see, watch my interviews and watch my podcasts and other random videos I do on here. And as far as listening to the podcast, I'm on, anywhere you can listen to a podcast, you can hear the Horror Research 30 podcast. If you ever want to be a guest, shoot me an email, horrorwithsir.30. Again, that's horrorwithsir.30 at gmail.com. Oh, and before I forget, too, I do stream every now and then on Twitch. It's horror underscore with underscore search underscore sturdy. And I believe that's all. Again, thank you both for coming on. I had a great time. I greatly appreciate you both taking the time to come on the show. You too. Thank you so much for having us. It's been a pleasure. Anytime. Like I said, anytime you guys have some more horror stuff or you want to review a horror movie with me, even shoot me an email and we'll make it happen. Sounds good. <laughs> and as always, I'll see.